Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here of Fast Break for IU Sports Radio. On tonight's show, we discuss two surprising teams in the NBA, the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Orlando Magic. Can these team, two teams sustain, sustain their play early this season, or are they maybe due for a drop here soon? Plus, the Detroit Pistons, San Antonio Spurs, or double-digit losing streaks. Which one of these teams get themselves out of the hole first? We'll discuss that. Plus, we'll discuss the LSU women's basketball team. Kind of, kind of took her back around it. Angel Reese is not with it. Was not with the team in, in the Cayman Islands. We'll discuss her situation since last week. We didn't get the full details, but we'll discuss it here on tonight's show. Plus, we go over scores and news around the world of basketball. But this is Fast Break Live for IE Sports Radio on Speaker Radio. You're direct free for IE Sports, and you're welcome to join us. And joining us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen, lots to talk about, lots to get into here. I hope y'all had a good Thanksgiving this past Thursday. Uh, if y'all do choose to celebrate it for the folks out there, if you don't, hope all peace and blessings are with you. But this is Fast Break here for Ice Sports Radio, your one stop shop for all talk basketball here on, to in, on the interwebs of America in the world as well. D-Lock, how are you doing tonight, sir? And happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family too, man, as well. I'm doing very well, man. Um, my Bucks did take a, a rough loss, but my magic is killing like right now. We'll definitely talk about them. Uh, but everything is going pretty well. Um, we're and a good part of basketball season. I'm definitely like what I'm seeing, especially with these surprises. And you touched on the key word right there, surprises. It's so far this season, I, it's a lot of surprises with how certain guys are playing, how certain teams are playing. And... I think when we did our preview show, like we expected certain teams to stay where they were from last year. You know, there are certain teams expected to be at the bottom because how they came out at the end of last season, all that stuff. So we're about, what, 16, 17 games in the season. Almost getting to that 20 point, that 20 game mark. One of the teams that is a surprise right now is your Orlando Magic. They sit 11-5 and five right now. They're on a six-game winning streak right now as we speak. One of the highest in the league tied with the Phoenix Suns right now who have won six straight of their own. Right now, they are up on the uh, Charlotte Hornets, 113-102 to with five minutes and 23 min- uh, seconds left on the board. Right now, uh, Franz Wagner, 27 points for him, five re- uh, rebounds, 10 for 14 from the field. Paolo Pinchero, 19 points for him, six rebounds, seven assists. 24 points off the bench for Cole Anthony. On the Charlotte side of things, real quick, Miles Bridges, who is back from his suspension, playing pretty well. 18 points for him, 10 rebounds for him. Uh, LaMelo Ball, I, who I think I went out with the injury, 7 points for him. Terry Rozier, 16 points for him. Uh, Brandon Miller off the bench, 18 points, 4 rebounds for him, but 5 fouls. You got to get better at that. So, that's just the points to you. 
Are you surprised by the win streak with your Orlando Magic so far? Uh, to be honest with you, there are a few games that I was somewhat surprised by. But, you know, having that young core and what they were coming with from last year, you know, I was hoping that they would be able to make that jump. You know, Paolo Bancaro coming off the rookie of the year play. Um, you know, I thought that they were going to be a hell of a lot better, which it makes sense because I just feel like you know, now uh, you have this young core and you got to put them together. We've, seen, we've heard about uh, Cole Anthony, Markel Folks. You know, Suggs, maybe somebody would have traded, but that didn't happen. You know, and this young core can do a lot of things together. And, uh, you know, I've seen it last year ending. I might see it, still see it now. But you all know what my issue is. They do all this shit and then decide not to pay, you know, one of their players, and now that kind of changes where the franchise can go. So, you know, hopefully this is showing what we're doing. Uh, shows that this team can be very, you know, very good. And right now, starting Anthony Black pilot was a big, big, big change, a big uh, big move. Um, you know, he's not a person that's going to score like crazy, but he's playing some hell, a hell of a defense right now. So, to me, like I said, it's a few games, you know, beating the Nuggets was a big game. That was a shocker to me. Um, they're showing that they can compete with anybody, you know. And this team could be very good moving forward. I believe they beat Milwaukee as well. So, for me, if the Magic can stay consistent, they should make the playoffs for sure. I think for me, this is – I, I, we, when we talked on, on the previous series, and while I was doing my list and stuff like that, it's like one of these young teams, one of these teams got to break out from the pack. You know, like the the Magic, Hornets, Pistons, OKC, uh, New Orleans, hell, even San Antonio. You know, it's like one of these, these young teams got to break out the pack and kind of show show us something. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't continue to be stuck at the bottom, stuck at the bottom, stuck at the bottom. You really can't. You know, it's like a you know shout out to Jim B who does our Cleveland show. You know, kind of like Cleveland, for example. You know, they've been in the, were in the mud for a little while. Got a couple of draft picks in. You know, make a couple of trades here and there. You know, Jared Allen, bringing Donovan Mitchell. Now this team, you know, granted you got young pieces, but you got some veterans in there in the mix as well. So you can't be stuck, stuck, stuck. You got to do something to get you out of stuck and do something. But you don't land no magic. You know, they've been stuck at, you know, drafting, you know, draft, 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 drafting, the, you know, in the top 10 on the Kisses basis. And now those picks are kind of really turning the fortunes of this team around so far this season. You know, right now they're up 120 to uh, 104 against the Hornets. You know, 24 points for Koefi, 30 points for uh, Wagner. And these are guys that you drafted, guys you you expect to be corner, uh, quarterstones of your franchise. And hey, look, they're playing very well. And they well, if they hold on to this lead, it'd be a a seven game winning streak. And I, I salute them. I, I expected them to lead. I say this, they at least got me to playoffs. Look at the well, thing. Go ahead. My thing is with my thing with this team is it's not about. I think they're. I think they are. 
I think they are one of the better teams. You know, like you said, the draft picks that they made is showing what it could do for them. But, you know, I'm thinking long term. You know, we're going to be good this year. We're going to be good for the next couple of years. But Bancaro has to get paid at some point. What are you going to do? You know, and I think that's the biggest thing. Jalen Sub, these guys, you know, can you give them extensions now or whatever to keep your core? Because I've known multiple teams that we had with a good core, but once it's time to pay some of these guys, they, okay, well, hey, we didn't let you go somewhere else, and we'll start over. And I think that's the biggest thing that plays a huge part. So, again, hopefully, um, they, they should definitely make the playoffs this year, how they're looking. Um, you know, but we want to, you, you want to create that culture. And if you can continue to create that culture and keep that, now the expectation is not just making the playoffs, but now it's even getting farther. And, you know, I know, like, Orlando is one of those places that if you kind of hit on something like you allude to, they'll, they'll maintain it. But they don't go out their way to kind of, you know, make something good. It's like, like the, you know, ever since they're in the league, the drafts, like hit, getting, uh, hitting on Shaquille O'Neal, you know, making the move for Penny Hardaway, and then you know, you know, drafted Mike Miller, that kind of helped that little turnaround in the early two thousands. Then getting dropped Dwight Howard, and then you off the races there. You know, uh, now you kind of like fast forward in time right now. Paolo Petrero, yeah, you want to look at that as like the turning point. But you look at Franz Wagner, he started to come around. You know, Cole Anthony is kind of like, are we going to keep him around or not? And he's becoming like one of the better six men in the league this year. So I'm, you know, I've been impressed with this team. Granted, you know, it seemed like um, Ball went out with the injury, so that probably paid the factor to will be the outcome in this game. But I, I give you magic credit. You, I mean, you beat who you uh, beat who you play, beat who you're in front of you. And you know, next game, about. Looking is right, the 29th, they got the Washington Wizards. And you talk about a team that's like in the mud right now. You beat them. You're looking at eight straight. And I was saying like, and you say like this. Milwaukee hasn't been consistent. Boston has been like the more consistent team in the East. Philly, they've been consistent, but Joel and B will rest here and there. Knicks, Pacers, they got their issues, especially at the fourth spot. And then the Miami Heat seem like they kind of just getting slow at the gates again. If they could, you only imagine keep this up. I think they'd be tight. Which I'll let you have the last word. I think if they can play like this, I think. You know, you compete with those teams in the East. And you got the young core. So, uh, hell, you got go got there playing like the comeback player of the year. You know, we're doing this without Wendell Carter. So, I guess I think this team is – could be one, one of the consistent teams in the East, which is what you want. And, again, if you can make the playoffs – then you are you are good to go then. So for me, I, I like I like how this team is looking. And if they can keep it up, you're gonna be put in a situation where you know you you're not gonna be in a play. You know, you could be one of those teams that maybe have the fourth or the fifth seed. You know, somewhere around there. So uh 
I like it, man. I ain't gonna lie. I definitely do. I just want to see beyond this year. You know, yeah. We've seen when we drafted somebody and they played well for us. And I want to see if we can do that and like pay them and continuously be good. So yeah, we'll definitely talk about the Linda Magic Board throughout the season. A team I think both of us you know had expectations about the playoffs, but for them to wrap to go off this winning streak right now with the uh in season tournament, you know, getting to like um something death play here soon. I think it's a great look for them uh, early on in the season. To go to the other team in the West, who's been on the um, top of the standings in the West, the Minnesota Timberwolves. They are top of the West at 11 and 4. I know me and you, we talk, I, we talk about Minnesota. You always kind of been higher on them than me. Just because I think, you know, I think Towns has kind of been like a letdown to be like a top five player in this league. You know, the size, shooting ability, but he don't got that extra gear to be that dude. If he had like a mentality like Kevin Garnett in a sense, I'm not talking like being crazy on that stuff on a consistent basis, but that strong-minded mentality, that drive and stuff like that, I think, you know, we're talking about a different team here and a different player and all that good stuff. But so far this year, they've been shutting me up, shutting up a lot of uh, doubters. Right now, they're up 112-93 on the, on the Memphis Grizzlies. Anthony Edwards has 24 points with six assists, five rebounds. Carl Towns, 18 points, eight rebounds for him. Ruby Gobert, 13 points, four rebounds. Mike Conley, 18 points, 10 assists for him. And off the bench, Nas Reed, who's been very consistent off the bench this year so far, 12.6 rebounds for him. On the other side of things, the Grizzlies, Derrick Rose, 12 points for him off the bench. David Rowdy, 11 points. Zaire Williams, 11 points. You know, no Marcus Smart due to injury. You know, Jaron Jackson had 18 points, but only four rebounds. Are you surprised by Minnesota's play at the top of the standings right now? Or did you expect this, especially out of Anthony Edwards, who played for Team USA this summer, and kind of carried that momentum to this team? Are you surprised that Minnesota's at the top of the standings early in the season? Um, I'm... You know, I've been, for the years I've been talking about how Minnesota should be, uh, you know, that team, and it seems like it's finally coming together. Anthony Edwards is growing into his own. He's being, you know, that dominant player. But having the guys around him is definitely helping. I think, you know, when we back and look, when we look back at the trade that Utah made with Minnesota, at first we were thinking that. Why would they do that? You know, doesn't make any sense. But, you know, maybe at this point that was a better move for them because he's bringing that presence on the defensive side. You know, you touched on something saying part of the time mentality isn't there. You know, you wish it was kind of like Kevin Durant. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett's. Um, but at this point, you know, I think that, you know, you bring in Gobert, who has that defensive presence. You know, he's bringing the energy that Carlton Towns is possibly not having. So, uh, for me, I think that 
you know, this team needed that defensive presence. And they're they're coming along. I mean, they're looking like a, a team that can be very competitive. I mean, you bring in a Mike Conley. Like, you got the defense, and now you got Anthony Edwards who can score anytime he wants. You know, up and coming. Uh, Alexander Walker. So, when you got these kind of pieces, um, I think it plays a huge part in, you know, the results. And in my mind, man, when I see how they're playing, I'm saying, finally, you know, I've been talking about them all this time. They're finally putting things together, you know, and it seems like it's working pretty pretty well. Mike Conley is a huge asset to this team. Um, they needed one of those quarterback, quarterbacks to lead that offense or that lead that team. And he's playing a huge role. So uh, this team can and can definitely – it'll be different than when we see Patrick Beverly jumping all over the place and crying and all that when he was in the dome about them making the playoffs. Um, I think that the Timberwolves are going to be one of the teams that are going to actually make the playoffs not to play in. I think I, I'm kind of surprised that Gary top of the standings. Now, I think a couple of factors has – played into that, like Jamal Murray being out for Denver right now with the hamstring issue. That, I think, has played a factor into that. Uh, also think, like, you know, the Lakers kind of not finish off teams like they should. You know, the Clippers having their struggles off the gate. And also say, I also said in the previous season, I think I said Memphis the team they're playing, I thought they'd be better what they were, uh, what they uh, are right now. Now, what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, is like, we've seen them the past couple of years, well, John Morant out, they still play pretty damn well as a good team, uh, with, with as a team. You know? So I, I thought to myself, oh, oh yeah, he's going to be out 25 games. But they got no structure there and the depth. Plus, you know, you signed Derrick Rose. You got Marcus Smart in the trade. You think, okay, I'll, you know, they'd be all right. But Memphis, I mean, right now they're on a three-game losing streak, losing streak, about to lose to Minnesota here. Uh, actually, the game just uh, in the final. 119 to 97. But this is like, I thought Memphis would be a little bit better. You know, the Suns right now, they're in six game winning streak. You know, they play the Knicks down one, uh, they play up 113, 109. But for me, for Minnesota, I was like, man. That really surprised me. I think, you know, the thing you touched on, like, they got a quarterback at Mike Conley in which they really didn't have ever since uh, Anthony Edwards has come to the league. You never really stabilized that point guard spot since he's been there. Now you got that kind of situated. Granted, Mike Conley's about my age. So you got to figure, I mean, it's good days there, but if you want to keep this thing up, you got to get somebody in there and develop if you want to sustain this success. I think they kind of now understand the pecking order or the thing. Anthony Edwards is the face of the franchise. Yeah, I think and Towns is content of being that number two guy. You know, so long that, you know, he does his job. Gobert is that defensive anchor. Um, Jay McDaniels, if he's in when that lineup, he, you know, that glue guy in that three spot. And, this, and I, you know, the team is rolling. You know, the guys like Nikhil Alexander, um, Kyle Anderson, Troy Brown, Nas Reed. Shake Milton. That's a pretty good solid bench, you know, after your starters. 
So they keep this play up. And I think it's key that to keep this play up because we don't like I said, you don't know how long Jamal Murray's gonna be out for Denver. If you could put yourself some distance there, hope Denver, you know, lose some games, stuff like that, I think you come out pretty good. You know, Dallas is playing pretty well at the gate. Houston. Some people are being surprised by Houston's play. So, you know, that's something I can keep a watch on as well. That some people didn't expect Houston to be out the gate really competitive like this. But I think to, for me and you, we weren't really surprised by that. Because who the coach is. But I've been surprised by Minnesota. I always kind of, you know, just kind of brush them to the side, put them in the back burner. But. They really surprised me uh, so far in the season. You know, the one thing you just look up, bam, they're at the top of the standings. Oh, damn. I didn't know y'all had a lot in y'all like that, but credit to them right now for being top of the West. I'll let you have the last word. Yeah. I mean, when you, like we said about the magic, you got the core. And I feel like they have the, the chances to be one of those teams in the West. Now the West is, is I feel as it is a hell of a lot tougher than uh, the East. But you know, with the guys that you got, you know, they can be that enforcer. I think that you know, Gobert is making Cardinal three times a better player. That's my thought process behind it. I feel like he's definitely helping him become a better player. And with the guy that you have bringing that defensive presence, you know, which is what you rarely see in the West. You know, they're showing, you know, that they can compete with anybody. And as you said, Memphis is just saying, we seen Memphis without John Morant last year. We thought that they were going to be the same exact thing, but clearly we see how much of a difference Tyus Jones is making on that team, mm-hmm. not being there. So, you know, for me and hell, me and you would just talk about Tyus Jones, you know, what he did yesterday. But, you know, not having that presence. And now I believe Marcus Smart has been out for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it. Memphis doesn't – Memphis are in some trouble right now. You know, we talked about the whole John Morant thing. You know, people thought, oh, well, they'll be okay because, you know, they got that young core. But missing a few pieces that were there. And now – no mark, no, no market smart. That team is not the same as they were last year, so that could be a thing as well. But for the uh, Tim Wolves, but they have been looking very impressive all year. If they can keep this up, I don't think it's a plan for them. I think they're probably looking at a, a good seed as well, and that's in the West. Yeah, so you know. Memphis, they down in standings right now. I think that's like one of the surprises. Yeah, like I said, Memphis will keep this up. I think, you know, things was looking pretty um, good on their side. Let's go over scores and stuff like that around the league. Uh, the Knicks are down 116 to 113 to the Phoenix Suns. Uh, no Kevin Durant tonight, but Devin Booker, 28 points for him, 11 assists. Eric Gordon, 25 points for him. Najee, a little, 11 points for off the bench for him. And it seemed like if they, well, game went final. So the Phoenix Sun have won seven uh, games in a row. And the Knicks, after their big comeback win on Friday, against the Miami Heat, drop a never uh, won. Just like that at home. Bruns had 35 points, 8 assists for him. Julius Randle, 28 points, 5 rebounds for him. Uh, Emmanuel quickly, 18 points for him off the bench. And you only got 10 points between Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo. I watched that game between the Knicks and Heat the other night. At one point, D-Lock, the Heat had like a 20-point lead. 
on the Knicks. And I was like, oh, they're going to blow them out and all that stuff, you know, kind of like they did in the playoffs, stuff like that. But I get the Knicks credit. And I get credit to three players on that game Friday. Brunson, R.J. Barrett, and Emmanuel Quickly. And that mid third quarter to, to the rest of the game, their scoring brought them to that game. It's to the point that like, the game flipped like New York couldn't buy a bucket, but then Miami at that point couldn't buy a bucket as well. And I was like, man, y'all got some fight to y'all. But it's just like, can some of these other pieces get there to be that consistent team? And we kind of talk off the air before we got on the show. Julius Randle. Granted, he had a, a strong scoring game today. The game before, the Miami game, 13 points, 7 assists, 8 rebounds. Do you think, real quick, on Julius Randle, if he can wake up, what's the ceiling on this New York team? Because I think they got the scoring guards in Brunson quickly. It's Thibodeau, don't mess it up. And Barrett to do some damage. Granted, I think I think you got to swap somebody out for Quentin Grimes in the starting lineup, but what's the ceiling if Julius Randle gets his act together? What's the ceiling on the Knicks or your opinion? Well, I think this team is very much stacked, but I feel like Julius Randle needs to play a hell of a lot better. Um, the ceiling is very high for them. I mean, I feel like R.J. Barrett is starting to come into his own. That sign of Jalen Bronson is shown to have paid off. You know, he is playing very, very well. Um, but also for I believe for Julius Randle to actually, as crazy as this may sound, for Julius Randle to actually play better, I think they're probably going to have to move Mitchell Robinson, Fonzie Hartstein, or maybe both. You're going to need to put more pressure and more attention on Julius Randle. He needs to do more. The ball needs to be more in his hands. If he cannot do that, then that is a totally different uh, situation. But they have a lot of pieces. I like Quinn Grimes. You know, he's a very good defender. You know, and I feel like this team is built. Uh, again, we talk about teams in the West, I mean, in the East. Like, this is the perfect, like, perfect situation for them. So, I think that this team can be very good. You know, they can get pretty far. But, you know, you have one of your star players in Julius Randle who is just not uh, performing very well. Um, and that is something that has to be fixed. I mean, you're loaded to guard this channel. If they get Demichizo and Josh Hart, these guys, like you have everything that you need somewhat at that position. So maybe now the focus, or hell, you don't have to necessarily trade Mitchell Robinson or or Isaiah Hartstein, but maybe have Randall starting at the five. And, you know, you maybe bring Mitchell Robinson off the bench or something because – it just seems like from watching the game sometimes, man, it seems like Julius Randle is like an afterthought. Like he's like a, like a okay, well, everybody else is gonna touch the ball, and then Julius Randle, and it shouldn't go like that. So, I feel like there's not enough space for both Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson on the floor. It's kind of like Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. Like both of them are very talented, but hell. If you got both on the floor, they both can't give you 10 rebounds. They both can't grab the same rebound. So, uh, for me, I like what the Knicks have. You know, you you have the guards. You have a lot of that. But, you know, to your point, 
Julius Randle, if, if he can wake his ass up, some, or they can wake, or they can find a way to get him going, you know, consistent, the Knicks can be pretty solid. Um, that's something that they have to figure out, and it may be, you know, a starting mix-up that you have to. It's kind of like, you know, Russ requesting to come off Russell Westbrook requesting to come off the bench when James Harden was there. I mean, gets there is there. Um, so maybe that may have to play a part in how the Knicks make their plans. But you no, know, I feel like Julius Randle is one of the talent, one of the better talented uh, players on the team. They just got to get him more involved and more consistent. Yeah, I think, you know, that's the thing, too. I think they got to get consistent out of him. And more of the, the rebound side of things. You know, I think if he gets stronger there, and he's strong, I think we all know that. He's a strong individual. I think if, if he can, you know, just be more assertive at times and not, you know, Not going crazy shooting threes like he's Steph Curry or something like that, but just kind of picking his spots. You know, kind of like LeBron, like watching that Dallas game the other day. You know, uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You know, at times, you know, I was just screaming at the laptop. You know, I was like prepping my food and stuff like, damn, dude, go at him. Drive out and he can't play defense like that. And so it's like, ready right in the same boat. It's like, damn, dude, you trying to take all these damn jump shots. And, I, you know, one thing, I, you know, with LeBron, he's a better jump shooter than Randall. They can hit that on a consistent basis. But you, dog, no. No. Every once in a while, yeah. But other I mean, than that, got the lane, post up, you know. I don't care if you're like a one trick pony with your left hand. Damn it, be the strongest one trick pony with your left hand. You know, it's just like, be consistent, man. I think that's what the fans ask for, just be consistent. Be tough. You know, you're 6'8, six, 6'9. Six, six, Show it. Two, six, exactly. Six, Show it. You know, playing the Phoenix Suns tonight. No Kevin Durant. You know, show it tonight. Granted, y'all lost, but show it. You shouldn't have no five rebounds against the Phoenix Suns. They had no size. Yeah, they don't have all. That's that's true. Well, I think, you know, that's the thing that kind of, you know, drives that fan base nuts. It's like, damn. Come on, dude. Like, you, you could be better than this. And my thing is with that, you know, he he was in a very good matchup. You, you, you're looking at Kevin Durant not being there. I mean, he should be able to dominate. Ain't no way that I'm gonna see. I'm gonna tell you what I've seen on a game cast. He has been game cast. Eric Gordon blocking Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. Ain't no way in hell that's supposed to happen. Like, come on, man. You know, with all that size and you dominate. You know. He can be that player. But also, like I said, maybe it's, you know, coaching, however they set up the lineup, they get him more involved. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of players have egos where they don't want to come off the bench and play that six-man role or whatever. You know, it kind of makes things kind of tough. But, uh, you know, I think that if Julius Randle could get going, his next team could be very special. And it could be consistent. Oh, yeah. So, Knicks fans, we, we get your, we understand your frustrations with Julius Randle. Man, we hope he kind of falls in line with the other guys and kind of gives your teams a boost. But, you know, we shall see uh, how that goes about. One thing I want to talk about, d uh, I don't know if you're too familiar with this, and I, on the Twitter page slash X page, if you're not followers on Fast Break ISR, I, I didn't 
I was kind of hesitant to tweet on that because a couple days ago, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Giddy was trending on Twitter, or X, what you want to call it. And he was not trending for his play. You know, OKC, one of those young teams that we, you know, been talking about all show. They are second right now in the West behind Minnesota at 11-5, 0.5 game back behind Minnesota. Josh Giddy is a fine player. You know, kind of like a utility player can score a little bit, rebound, assist, stuff like that. You know, a good cog in the uh, starting lineup. But D Lock, he was trending for, I guess, a relationship with a minor. You know, alleged inappropriate relationship with a minor. From what I saw and gathered through the uh, social media feeds, like the young lady that he was with was posting on Snapchat that he was she was talking to him. He even posted that you know they had, they did their business and she posted it on Snapchat. And he was there in the picture. So, you know, there's that. You know, how these two connected, I don't know. There's seemed like a relationship that Giddy has with the brother, all that good stuff. And, you know, it got to a point that the league isn't looking into it. You know, the Thunder said, you know, he will still play for the team, you know, which they played last night against Philly, in which they lost the game. You know, he had 10 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds. You know, Giddy saying they having no comment. comment. So they really kind of just like, no comment, nothing to say, all that good stuff. What? What are your thoughts on this? Because as we've seen, I don't know, I, I guess as we've seen here the past couple weeks or so, you know, in the news and all this stuff, like, we've seen Diddy's Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, his past coming to really his ugly head in the uh, media cycle. Like his chicken, I, I want I want to say his chickens come on the roost. How he does, you know, every things coming up. What are you making? You know, his situation, Josh Giddy, and the way this team been playing early in says, what do you think this situation is going to affect this team down the line? I mean, for me, I I think that. Uh, You know, it's so much, you know, you hear most multiple things about this or what could be true. And, you know, it could be it could be false or whatever. Um, the fact that, he, you know, he had a no comment under it leads you to believe leads you to believe one way more than other. Um, and for me, man, like I just I'm kind of confused on. You know, how do you even put yourself in that situation? You know, um, and it's a very, very awkward and weird situation to even discuss and to be in because, you know, he is about what, probably 23, 24? Uh, let me double check that real quick. He might be a little older than that. I don't think so, though. That team is very young, so. He might be about 20, 22, 23. Um, 21. Go ahead. Uh, he's 21 years old. Go okay, ahead. so he's 21. Um, 
And so we could say that's probably around college age. You know, maybe just not graduating college, somewhere around there. Um, so he's a young, he's a very young guy. Uh, but even still, you know, you are old enough to know decisions you make, who to be around, how does it impact you, uh, the obvious rules. Um, and I've seen a lot of people compare him to Carl Malone's situation. So I, I feel like you know, this is something that definitely isn't good. Now you're around at age where you know, you're making decisions that you're more than likely going to regret later on in life. Uh, but, you know, something like this is kind of a, you get so many red flags or, or stop signs that, you know, at some point you're just ignoring those stop signs and red flags, you know, because you know what it can, what it can possess, what it, how it can impact you, not only your career, but just you as a person, you know, so, um, Obviously, basketball on a basketball basketball side, like you know, he apologized. This situation is never legal ever because it'll be talked about in thirty years still. But you know, at this point, um, I, to be honest, man, I think it's better for OKC just to have him like kind of stay away from the team. That's just my thought. You know. You know, for all the different things that we've heard players, you know, be suspended, be told to leave the team or just stay away from the franchise for a while, you know, to things get cleared up. This is definitely one of the ones that I think they should definitely be telling somebody, hey, look, man, you know, we just going to kind of let's just have you step back, you know. So, yeah, we've heard it many times with Josh Gordon. Smoking weed and teams literally don't want any parts of them. And now you have a totally worse situation going on with Josh Giddy right now, in my opinion. So um I just feel like this situation is very, very strange. And uh, this is something that needs to be cleared up and there's gonna be you no know, results for this. This has to be fixed. Uh as far as OKC, like they this stuff come out true, man. He, much as I hate to say it, more likely probably has to get waived or released because you don't want to promote something like that. You know, it definitely, definitely don't want no parts of that at all. Cause it's going to look very bad. I mean, we have numerous, numerous uh, situations that have been talked about. Like you said, the Diddy situation. Uh, hell, you know, R. Kelly situation. Like there's multiple you know, situations comparable and what makes this any different in my mind. Like, there should be different repercussions as well. So, it would be interesting to see how the league approaches this and OKC. I think, you know, and, you know, Gene's saying, yeah, he's uh, 21. Yeah. I think... You know, this kind of reminds me of like, well, I was like, you know, my dad was in the military and, we, you know, we move around all these different bases, stuff like this, uh, this and that, whatever. Remember like high school in Nebraska and we would live in this house and, uh, you know, in the office Air Force Base. And if y'all don't know the office Air Force Base, it's located in Bellevue, Nebraska. You know, just like a little south of Omaha, Bellevue's like located a little south of Omaha, and all that good stuff. And if you're like a, it's a uh, young, and my dad's in the Marine Corps, but you know he had to be sta- had to be stationed out there for his job for the uh, recruiting all that stuff. But point is, I remember this like. Those young uh, airmen, you know, these 
you know, 19, 18, 19, 20, 21, maybe 22-year-old dudes, you know, this is around, like, from 2004 to 2006, while I was last out there, the young dudes, they, you know, come around and date these uh, high school girls and stuff like that, and you know, they be picking up in the nice riots and stuff like that, and you know, we be seeing them like, oh, well, that's how the game is. And we, you know, we talk to me, we talk within the boys and all that stuff like that. It's like, damn, these dudes can't, you know, get somebody their own age. You know, they got to come to our part and stuff like that. And I was like, and I've seen this Josh Giddy stuff. kind of reminds me of that back in the day. Like, damn, dude. 21 girls in the, 21 in the NBA. You can't find somebody within your own age bracket. You know, in like um, in like uh Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, not too far from Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City. Am I correct? I believe so. I think uh, I double check on that because uh, that's definitely you know, a college town I need to be at, Oklahoma City. But it just for me, like I said, I feel like it's they are actually about an hour, yeah, about thirty, about, about an hour, about sixty miles. That ain't nothing. So it, it kind of reminds me of Dad D logs, like these dudes. It's like they go get these young high school girls who I'm not saying some don't know better, or whatever, but. They get impression by these older guys, and don't miss the guys their own age because they're they immature, or whatever. They don't like them, all that good stuff, whatever. But I, I think with me, with Giddy is like, you gotta be smarter than this. You know, you're in the league, you have an image to protect. You know, we talked about in the summer and stuff like that. And even before, you know, the season started, we talked about Kevin Porter. You know, that situation there, the domestic issue on that stuff. Miles Bridges, his situation. You know, that domestic, all that stuff. Here is like, come on now, you, you got to think. You know, you got to think. And I understand. Look, and I shared a thing with you like a few days ago. How like Anthony Simons is having a baby with the uh, same woman that just had a baby with Brandon Ingram. And I, I, it's like, damn. And you said, you know, she ain't done yet. You know, it's like doing you're doing the same pool of women. And I get that. You don't want to deal with that same pool of women. You see your teammates. And honestly, I was like, damn, man. Y'all dating the same type of people. But that don't mean you go down to the lower age bracket. Nope. And, you know, I know. Each state's different. I know the age consent in Oklahoma. I looked this up. It's the uh, age of 16. But I think we live in society now that we have uh, public, you know, judgment. And that can, like, make or break you how you succeed in life in a sense, in a sense. 
not a death spot in a sense, like, you know, we've seen with some people, you know, maybe canceled, but you know, looking up, they're still doing shows and all that stuff. But, you know, Giddy, you still only had a rookie contract. You know, young, nice young team that's playing pretty well. So, I was like thinking like, damn dog. This ain't good. And the pictures on top of that as well. Not helping as well. Nope. He knew he was gonna take the pictures. Come on, man. You a, a star basketball player. Star you a you're a star athlete. You know what happens when they take pictures. Mm-hmm. And going to the chat, uh Jim B is saying, you know. When I was 16, my boyfriend was 19. Not overly uncommon, but definitely something to stay away when you're in the public spotlight. Not a good look. And then she also added, I've told my son since they were young teenagers, watch yourself. Once you're 18, you don't mess with the females under 18. Yeah. Like, once you turn 18, like, like once you turn the page eighteen, that that flip that script flips very quick. Like society, like they flip that script on you very quickly. In terms of, you know, you got to join the military, join the workforce, go to college. You know, you get in trouble. You know, you're not protected under juvenile status. In in some cases. Boom, you're going to the, the adult leagues now. And I hate, I mean, we'll see what the outcome of this D-Log is like, but damn. It's not a good look on this in the end. And I don't know if you know this too, but a lot of these uh, major networks really haven't talked about this. You know, are you surprised about that, or you are they kind of waiting till more info comes out? I, I'm, I'm, I would say, I'm kind of like seeing it. they probably want information, but I'm kind of not too surprised because you know there have been historic stuff that has historic things that have happened that they just kind of like went on past and didn't, didn't talk about. Uh, because it is a it is a very important subject, you know, and you know, they kind of skip past it as if hell, like it shouldn't be talked about, you know. Um, a lot of these major shows, you know, they go over what they're going to talk about prior to the show, you know, a lot of them, and you know, this is something that. Has to be talked about, and the thing about it is, when they do talk about it, they ain't gonna talk talk about it too long. They talk about it for about you know their segment would be probably like four or five minutes, and then boom, they're done talking about it. So I feel like you know as much as we like to talk about the success, uh, you know, of athletes of different things, you know, these conversations are are. Well, these different things need to be had, you know, uh, because again, if we're at a point, we're at a point where there will be a next generation. You know, we will continue to evolve, and you know, things like this need to be pointed out so we don't see it again. You know, well, we don't see it as much, and you know, you got college kids now, college basketball players that are going to go to the league one day. And, you know, this situation could have been discussed, but since it hasn't or wasn't t- talked about enough, you know, another player follows suit. I mean, uh, we go back to, this is kind of a pretty much different, but still a situation. This is a Zion Williams situation. You know, we talked about that and a lot of talked about it, but it kind of was like it was not talked about enough to where, okay, look, this is something that, 
a bad situation to be in, X, Y, and Z, whatever, uh, because you know, it's not not something that needs to continue continuously happen. So, uh, like I said, hopefully, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to investigate some more information, but it definitely should be something that's, you know, a big topic, especially on shows or different different things that talk about you know different sporting events that definitely bring these things up as much as we talk about success and stats and stuff like that and then you know i'm pretty sure you saw this like they kind of try to put him in the same breath as carl malone you know that and i that's kind of tough to put that on him because we know about the Carl Malone situation and all that that you know you know him and a 14 year old girl she got pregnant which um turned out to be uh Cheryl Ford I believe and you know that whole situation and then makes it so funny you know everybody knew about this and the league still kind of when they had the All Star game out in Utah, they still kind of celebrated the man as well. So I was like, I don't know, it's like the league. They they kind of I don't know, it's like funny style, but it's just like sometimes they lack self awareness. It's like, come on, fellas, do better. But. You know, what goes what happens after here, I, I don't know. I'm checking articles. Nothing else has kind of popped up. Nothing popped up. I do agree with you, like like he may have to step away because like like we mentioned about Sean Cone, R. Kelly, you know. And you know the the news out of New York uh, with the uh, with the law that you know, sue your um, accused in civil court. You know a whole bunch of names dropped. So big names, but if you talk about these NBA circles, Josh Giddey's name is right up there right now. And the league really doesn't need that right now. You know, that the NCC tournament been pushing that real uh heavy. You know, Kevin Porter is not playing. Granted, Miles Bridge is back, but he's been kind of quiet so far. And over that, you know, we've been talking about you know the Orlando Magic, Minnesota Tipper Wolves. You know, Dallas Mavericks been playing playing well. So I think the league gotta kinda You know, do something about this, or people will put that public public pressure on them. But I'll let you have the last word. I mean, when it comes to something so serious, you know, because when you are successful as a person, no matter what you're an athlete or any other careers, you are looked up to by somebody. Um. And these things, you know, is what others, you know, the younger generation copy. You know, they can they see what this is the reason why we got so much uh we talked so much about John Morant and guns. Yeah, that was talked about for the longest and suspension all this, you know, for a reason. To be honest with you, I think this situation is worse than John Morant's situation. And it needs to be discussed as such. So, you, know, you, you know, I think the NBA definitely has to look into this. I'm thinking maybe they're trying to get more, like like we discussed, they're trying to get more information before they just all of a sudden say, hey, well, you know, we're going to suspend you or whatever. But, you know, this definitely needs to be something that's discussed because, 
you know, we all, you have, you have a kid already. I want to have kids one day. Um, but I want to make sure that my family is in the best situation, you know, not putting them in a bad situation. So I feel like obviously either being a young, young athlete, uh, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do different things, which us as people, we do. But, you know, there, there's, there's a reason why, there are reasons why we have rules in the world we live in. And, you know, they got to, we got to follow them. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it's kind of like literally driving. And you're seeing a stop sign and say, okay, you are literally a thousand feet from, a thousand feet from, uh, a dead end, and it keeps telling you. It keeps telling you every th- every hundred hundred feet. Okay, you're a thousand feet. Now you're nine hundred feet. Now you're eight hundred feet, and, and it's telling you to stop. But you continue driving. That's a decision that you're making as a driver. It's, it's warning you. Um, and I feel like in this situation, if this is what it seems to be, you know, he's had multiple signs to hit, let him know. Hey, this hey, this isn't. This is not a smart thing to do. This is what you're heading into. Uh, and for somebody to have so much attention, that's going to get, you're going to get exposed either way. So, like I said, hopefully this is something that he, learn, <clears throat> he learns from, but also other athletes as well, because, you know, that this is something that <clears throat> goes beyond sports. And, um, Hopefully, this is something that does not continue to happen. Yeah, I think Josh Giddy got to be wise about that. It's like, and also, like, put your team in a situation like, damn, dog. Kind of cooking right now. But it's like, you kind of got to bet the people who you're trying to date, especially, especially your ball player. You know, especially your ball player, you gotta bet who's gonna be around you. And if it's not good intentions, or it's not the right situation, or whatever. Hey, you gotta just move on, move on, and just focus on your game. And then if that person comes to you live; they come to you live. But don't, you know, be out in the streets just doing whatever willy nilly. Got to think. Think think with your head. Top. Not below. Think at top. Some of y'all will get get that reference, but y'all get my point. Y'all got to think. So, we'll see what shake out is. Um, Like I said, he did play last night. You know, in OKC's loss to uh, Philadelphia. And by the way, Joel Embiid, another strong 30 point game for him. He's been really kicking ass so far this year. Uh, but uh, next game for them, OKC is uh, Tuesday against Timberwolves in group play. So, top two teams in the West going at it on Tuesday. And you kind of don't want that distraction in going to Tuesday's game. Uh, to wrap up some scores real quick in the NBA side of things. Uh, the Nets up on the Bulls, 94-83, I mean, uh, with eight seconds left in the third quarter. 18 points for Kobe White, 17 sack for Lean, 21 for DeMar DeRozan. Only four points for Vucevic, which is kind of pathetic because Brooklyn has no size down low. On the Brooklyn side of things, Lonnie Walker, 20 points up for him off the bench. Uh, 13 for Mikel Bridges. 18 points for Spencer Dillwilly. He's been playing pretty decently the past couple of games. Rose Neal, 17 points, nine rebounds for him. Five for nine for outside for three for him. Uh, Raptors, Cavaliers. Cavaliers up two. At the end of the third, Don, uh, Donovan Mitchell only had six points so far, which I think he'll probably turn on here in, uh, here in the fourth quarter. Max Struess, 20 points for him. 
Uh, Darius Garland, glad to see the injury didn't uh, keep him out of this game. 15 points for him, 8 assists. Jared Allen, four, about 14 points, 3 rebounds for him. But Evan Moley, 10 points, 11 rebounds for him. Wrap the side of things. Siakam, 14 points for him. Uh, 13 points off the bench for Gary Trent Jr. And Dennis Charlotte only has seven points uh, for the Raptors. Uh, Celtics went in. And Jim B saying, uh, Strew score always, always 20 third quarter. Hey, man. Hey, D Lock. I think low key, that was a good signing by Cleveland. Because I thought when they got tra- carries the verb, real quick. I thought when they got carries of her, I thought he would be at least that third option. He kind of showed a little bit that in, in, in Brooklyn, but they never went all the way with them. And I thought with Cleveland, him and Garland, maybe we would do some things, but Drew's been a good uh, spot up option out there for them. What you think? He's been playing well. I mean, Especially if one of them are out, she's been playing really good. You you bring somebody like that to the table like me, that was a big pickup because Isaac Carl wasn't really. Play. I think he's a probably better forward player, better a power forward than small. Uh, but now you bring somebody else who can come in and score, like his truce. Uh, hell, I know Miami missing them right now, especially with all the injuries that they got. So. Mm-hmm. But that big, big bonus, um, you know, in Strews, I think that was a big signing. And also even another person that's playing pretty good with them when he gets the minutes is Craig Porter. He gets a chance to play. He plays well. But Strews has, has been very good. I want to see how long he can keep this stretch up and fit in with his offense. So... Yeah, Jen said, uh, echo your sentiments. You know, he's been a great addition, especially with the injuries. You know, Mitchell has missed time. Garland has missed time. So, you know, having Struis there, you know, with him averaging about uh, 14.1, uh, 14.1 points so far this year, you know, five rebounds, you know, shooting uh, 43% for the field, you know, that, that will go a long way for this team. My eyes, and then you know these guys can stay healthy and talk about um, Garland and Mitchell and a couple other guys. I think it'll go a long way for this team. But you know, key word is you know healthy. Can they stay healthy? But you know, we'll we'll see on that front. The Nuggets been kind of well. Besides Jokic, everybody else is kind of, kind of playing mid. Uh, they're up 72-60 on the Spurs. Like I said about the Spurs, they're on 11-game losing streak. You know, with Banyo so far, 17 points for him, now rebounds for him. Basel off the bench, 14 points for him. Four for six from the three-point land. They 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 got to figure out that point guard position because I haven't show, uh, Jeremy Shohan there at the point. It's not working. Joe gets 21 points for him, five re- five assists for him so far. Michael Porter Jr., 15 points for him. Um, six points for Don- DeAndre Jordan and five rebounds for him. An uh, exciting guy to him. And Christian Bond, five points for him off the bench. Uh, going to the college things, uh, side of things real quick. Today's games, FAU beat down Virginia Tech 84 50. Colorado beats Iona 85 68. Texas beats Wyoming 86 63. Texas AM, four point victory over Iowa State. Yesterday matchup, the top 25 action. Alabama rebounds after they lost against Ohio State. And I will say this the CBA, CBS Sports app, it sucks. I try to watch the album game on uh not today, but um 
what was it? Uh, Friday sucks. I was watching for a little bit and it cuts off and it says, I got to be scrapped. It sucks. I got to get it out there. Anyways, they went 99-91 against Oregon uh, in the Emerald uh, Coast Classic down in um, down in Destin. Going to Friday's matchup, FAU beat Texas A&M 96 89 North Carolina beats Arkansas 87-72. Arkansas is kind of like a little slide right there. UConn win 90-60 over Manhattan. Mississippi State beat Nichols State 74-61. Oklahoma beat USC 72-70. Let me ask you about USC real quick. Do you think Bronny plays this year? Man, my suggestion, I don't think he should, but I think that there's a chance that they will uh, have him out there. I just seen, I believe, was it LeBron saying that he's just not getting Bronny is going to be back uh, fully healthy. I think he's going to practice. He's going to be practicing a lot more. But I don't know, man. I probably I I wouldn't on the safety side, but clearly they're pushing to get him to the NBA so he can play with his dad. But I don't think it's wise in the play now. I think they need to sit back. You know, I, I felt like that was one of those situations where you have to sit back and see what other career opportunities that you want. But I think they will have put him out on the court at some point because of all the recognition that it would it would bring. Yeah, I kind of think both of you like you know, six games in the season. You know, we got Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis. And then um, Kobe Johnson in there as your guards. I was like, mm, why not just wait a year and kind of, you know, be that that uh, that guard next year? Now, granted, I, I don't have the recruiting in front of me right now, but I, I, I had to guess, like, Isaiah Call and Boog Ellis, they probably coming out after this year. Uh, if I, if I, well, Boog Ellis is senior. But they'll be gone. So I... So if I was Brownie or the James, you know, contingent, I just kind of just, just kind of wait a little bit, you know, just kind of wait a little bit, see how things go, don't rush it, and you know, just kind of go from there. I'm trying to pull up the recruiting. Let's see. So the 2024 class so far, the guy committed as a uh, guard, Trent Perry, 6'4", out of Studio City, California. They got a kid named Brody Kovatsky out of Utah. He's a forward. And then they got another kid, Liam Campbell out of Idaho, who's a 6'4 guard. So you know, those guys I just named out. I, I, I don't think they better than the Bronny are right now. So, I don't think if they come in, they'll be better than the Bronny. So, like you said, just kind of push out for a year. You know, just kind of push it out for a year. Make him, I, I, you know, make him the star of the team, star of attention. Granted, I think that'd be a high expectations for him, but you get what you want. You get him the lone spotlight out in USC and just go from there. I think the fact that they want to see him play with LeBron is the biggest thing, and they want to give him the opportunity to play with him. And 
they know what they they know what's gonna happen when he play when he show up. Hell, he was at the girl game and still got he was at the women he was the USC women's basketball game and he got the attention for being there. So imagine when he get on the court. And how, and how dare he takes away attention from Juju Watkins? Exactly. Like damn, Juju Watkins a hell of a player. We talked about her about a couple weeks ago. She a baller. Like she's a future player of the year. No cap. So, but like I said, hopefully Brownie, I mean Brownie comes back healthy and not rushed. I think that's what we both want. Not rushed at all. Uh, of course, real quick, Kentucky beat Marshall 118-82. Uh, Alabama, like I mentioned, they lost to Ohio State. 92-81. Uh, Houston beats down Montana in 79-44. This is on Friday. Scores Thursdays. I had a full slate on Thanksgiving. So, Creighton got to beat down against Colorado State. They did not shoot well at that game at all. The, the best I watched. Arizona played pretty strong for the most part against Michigan State, and they went on 74-68. So another big win for Arizona against a top perennial program. And I think Arizona, maybe early on, you kind of look at them as favorites, kind of win it all, you know, come tournament time. You know, they got Wisconsin on December the 9th, Purdue on December the 16th, on Peacock. Then they got Alabama and Phoenix on December 20th, FAU on December 23rd. Then it's our conference play with Cal and Stanford. So December's gonna be a a stretch for Arizona there. If they come out at least with one loss, then hey, put your Vegas out, put your Vegas odds on Arizona men's basketball possibly win the uh the tournament. If they come in that stretch with at least one loss. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us here for I Sports Radio, your direct feed for all the sports. And thank you for tuning in with us tonight. We've got a lot to talk about all again tonight as well. And all that good stuff. Uh, d Lock, how can people find you on social media? Guys, find me at Black Dash 813. Uh, I was going to talk about my magic a little bit more. Uh, they're on Hot Street, man. Playing very well. Looking to do some damage moving forward. Let know they, where they can find you at and the show's page. You can find the show's page at Twitter at Fast Break IESR. That is Fast Break IESR on Twitter slash X. Um, do follow iSports Radio on all your social media feeds on X slash Twitter, Facebook. YouTube, Instagram, as well. Do check out iSportsRail.com for your latest shows, news, and feeds, and times, and all that good stuff. I do never, I do another show on the side called The Crooks Process. You can find that show on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok at The Crooks Process. You see the CP logo on Facebook and Instagram. And TikTok, I got a picture of Daft Punk on there. Uh, I do have an X slash Twitter account at Spawn4288. That is Spawn4288. Do check me out on there. I post some stuff about the Iron Bowl that happened yesterday. And which, you know, they Alabama came back and won that game in the very last few seconds. But shout out to the boys in Tuscaloosa. But I do talk about stuff like that. The Titans, Alabama men's basketball. So do follow me on there as well. Uh, don't know it's going to be a show next week because I got prior engagement plans so we'll see you know if the show comes about but until then we'll talk to y'all later like I said do follow the show's page for any news and we'll talk to y'all later peace